established service. We're, we've only just opened up this week. Um, we go by the philosophy of Reggio Amelia. Um, I've been in the industry for 10 years now and I've been an educational leader for those whole 10 years. I'm very fortunate here that I am an off the floor educational leader. So I'm able to be a support in the room. So I like to spend most of my time in the room supporting the girls because a lot of them are still very new in the industry. So they need a lot of that support. And then I'm able to be their support when they're on planning to help them. So if they are needing help in any way, like and how to engage with children or just needing help with the routines, I'm there to help them, to support them in that. Probably the most common one would be quality area one that I do help support and drive the program in the centre. But I see my, my role as all seven to make sure that when I walk into room, I can be able to see all of those areas visibly in the room. So that's my, I feel like I'm everything. <laughs> so I, I, I am very fortunate that, because I, I, as I said, I've been an educational leader in every single centre that I've worked in. And it, it, the role varies so much between each one of those services that I've been in. And I've been very fortunate that here at Explorers, I'm allowed to participate in the development of the QIP. And I'm helping the, the, um, the educators in the rooms to also be a visible part of that as well, to, for them to be, have a voice in the QIP as well. I will on some staff meetings, I'll have like maybe five or ten minutes where I'll, I'll speak about something, but we do have lead educator meetings every week where I will get with all the staff members and we will have meetings. But I try not to make the meetings like, okay, I'm giving you a lecture at the start. I really want it to be a teacher research collaboration together. So it's, we have to work together about where our vision and goals are. The way I start supporting my staff is I get to know them. I need to have a relationship with my educators. I can't support them if I know nothing about them. So once I get to know them, then I know what their, what their style is for learning and I can help support them. I'm lucky because the way my role has progressed since my first centre to it is now like at the first when I was an ed leader and people didn't know much about it and everyone was just making their own things up, I had like a checklist. And you just, all my job was, was to go through that checklist and it didn't venture anything off that page. Now it has broadened so much that I'm so into the rooms to really support. She allows me to have like a budget and I can go out and I buy resources for the staff. Because my role is like, I don't even have a checklist. They just allow me to do what I want. They have that faith in me that what I'm doing is what's supporting my team. Because I've gotten to that point where not only do I help this, but now my role is going to other explorer centres where they see the importance of my role and all the things that I'm doing here to help support the team, that now I'm going to the other explorer centres to help support their educational leaders. I'm pretty good with anything that comes my way. I just deal with it. But to me, the biggest challenge as an educational leader is when we have new staff coming, that their knowledge and skills don't represent their qualification. Mm -hmm. With that is the struggle because they need to be retrained, if for lack of a better word. Because you, you, you hope that when you're getting a diploma come into the room, that they're aware of their roles and that they don't. And it's, it, it is harder when someone doesn't have that same passion as you. So that can be a challenge trying to get them on board with our vision and our goals. So it does help when they come to your centre that they do. Like in our induction, we do go over our philosophy and our vision and our goals. So hopefully it will in line with them that will make them want to come to us. I hope that my success is, is the outcomes that I see in the children. So if I'm doing my role properly, then they're doing their role properly. And then we'll be able to see that in the outcomes for the children. And I hope that I spark passion and, and excitement in their occupation. Because most of my assistants, they're all directors now, they're all, they're all leaders of their own. So hopefully that's showing me that I'm doing something right. <laughs> my role is to help and really support the educators. And if I'm doing that job properly, then they're going to be doing a better job with the children that will have better outcomes for the children. Most of my thing would be like on social media, like we're linked to a lot of the Facebook groups and things like that. But 
as we are a new service now, I've just recently, last week, contacted all the other early childhood centres around us to create a network. I feel it's, it's a journey, it's not a competition. So we'll hopefully get together and we'll try to work out what we want to do as a role. It's nice to be able to get together and see what's working for them, what's not working and collaborate together to find new answers and new ways of doing things. I'm a very one-on-one -on -one type person, even though we will still have our lead educator meetings together, but I do like one-on-one -on -one communication. And I always feel the best way to get through to people is to know them. So I need to build up that personal relationship with people. And then the communication seems to thrive from there. I need to learn their learning styles, ways of um, being more direct with certain people than others, just learning what works best for them. Families is why we're here. And especially being Reggio Amelia, we're all about the community. So I'm very hands-on with my families. Even though I'm off the floor, I will still be in the rooms. I will still just talk with the parents, get to know the parents, talk about the program. I need to know my parents inside and out. Well, the only way I can do that is to be in the room supporting, so I need to involve myself with the children on the floor as well as off the floor. And then once I'm able to see what the children are, I can have those discussions with the families. To me is to always keep educating yourself. I love books. I love researching. I'm, I'm as curious as they come. I'm anywhere and everywhere. It doesn't matter where you're starting, you just need to start researching and then that one research will take you somewhere else, somewhere else. Just read. We won't, we'll never lower our standard, but we need to take people where they're at. You've hired them for a reason. Whether they're creative, don't put them in a box. Let you, you know, so yeah. So wherever level they're at, you need to take them from where they're at and you need to help them and support them and work their way up to, to it. But I feel that's my, yeah, that support because when I go to other centres yep. and I just see the stress on the educators because too much work has been placed on them. When if they just had gone a different direction, they wouldn't be like that. You just need to take them where they're at and help support them and bring them up.